Hi there and welcome back to the channel or welcome here for the first time. My name is Yetil Lima Bravo for Foxtrot Hotel and today I'm gonna do some more experimentation with antenna wire, namely this sheep wire or sheep fencing wire that I bought really cheaply just a few weeks back and I tried very successfully as an end fed antenna. Today I'm gonna try to loop it up and do a small delta loop antenna. I've never built a delta loop successfully before and I've only given it one go and that didn't work well because of a lot of wind where I usually live but today is quite calm and I have a huge oak tree that I'm going to use as the top mount for this antenna. So let's get to building. This antenna is supposed to be cut at 30.3 meters, which is just below 100 feet. So I'm going to snip it at 30.4, just so I have a bit of leeway. It's probably not going to matter with this antenna at all. The wire I'm using today consists of three strands of 0.16 millimeter stainless steel wires, and then this uh, plastic uh, here for strength. And this is meant for electric fencing for sheep and other small animals. It's a cheap alternative, but it's also not meant to be used for antenna wires. It's open to the elements and so on. For this, it's a fun little test. I'm not doing any of my own calculations for this. I'm just using an online uh, calculator. This is from Oscar November 7, Lima Yankee Kilo. So thank you very much for making an online calculator. So if you don't know about Delta Loop, it's usually a uh, full wave loop. Usually they're connected into a transformer, something like this. Usually that should be a one to four uh, transformer. It's a hardy balloon, something I have I've had here at the cabin here for quite a few years. The antenna wire is 30.3 meters long and uh, each side is supposed to then be 10.1 meters. Of course, it's a triangle, equilateral tri triangle, and ideally each of them is the equal length. Also, one of the sides is gonna have the transformer placed roughly one third of the wavelength from one end. So that means uh, 2.4 meters from the bottom and 7.6 meters from the top. So I'm just gonna hook it in here with ground going in one way and positive going in the other. And uh, then we'll see how that goes. Everything going up to the antenna mounting three over there. So basically I'm just tying a knot here on the corner, which which one is the long and short end doesn't matter to my knowledge at least, so we'll see. 7.6 meters here and then to the, do the other one with the short leg. And that is 2.4 meters here. And if I'm not going to make a complete mess of this, I'll be shocked because this wire is getting tangled. That was a lot of untangling to do. This kind of rope, it's really open. It uh, splits up, it has separate cores. So it tangles really easily and, and it's also really hard to untangle. And now I got everything free here. I got the short end, I got the long end and I got the transformer, got to hook it together. This transformer is really nice because it has some uh, tie-in holes here so that you can do some stress relief. I'm not gonna have this up permanently, probably gonna rig it down today or tomorrow. So I'm just gonna latch it onto these straps on the end here and that's gonna be it. I think that's actually gonna be more than enough. And then I'm gonna snip off the plastic parts here so I get some free metal on the end. And I think that's gonna be it. And of course repeat on the other end. So you can see here there are uh, five strands of plastic to three strands of uh, stainless steel. Just a little snip. A few loops around here shouldn't be more than sufficient and I'm just going to run QRP power through this maybe a maximum of uh, 10 watts or something so that's not going to be an issue. Like so. And then repeat on the other side. I've also seen a few uh, descriptions showing that you should have a loop of coax on the end and uh, so I'm going to do a small loop of the coax I have if I have enough coax and uh, try that out. That's one complete assembly. Let's go up and mount it. 
But here I have the long side and um, I'm gonna attach that to my rope here with a zip tie just to keep it slightly insulated as this rope is slightly wet. And this is probably not showing up on camera at all. But this point should be at least a few meters above ground. And from what it looks like, it's exactly the 7.6 meters. So it's a good thing that it's not a straight an antenna. Coax goes on here. And this is just a standard RG58 coax. Nothing special about it whatsoever. And I'm winding in a few tiny small loops here as described in one of the guides just to choke off a bit of RFI I think it was. I don't have much coax so I can't make this a big loop but this should be sufficient hopefully. And that's just gonna go together with zip ties again. And now just gonna tie this off as long as far for I can get over here with this rope. And this is not going to be a horizontal antenna, but since it's sloping, I've decided to make it slope over southbound, which is usually a good way to try, try to throw signals here. And here, just another zip tie. I'm going to let this be loose so that it adjusts as it wants, and uh, that should be it. So that's my antenna assemble. It's at a roughly 45 degree slope. It's sloping southwards or so that it will throw the signal southward. If I went with a 20 meter one, I would probably be able to make this pure vertical with that mounting point, which is a good thing to know. So the recording I'm gonna do, so the testing I'm gonna do is pretty simple. I got my X6100 here. I didn't bring my VNA for this trip. So I'm just gonna rely on the SVR graph on that one. I'm gonna check yeah, 30 meters, also gonna check 60 and 15. And just for the fun of it, also 40 and 20, which are other bands I use a lot, but I would expect it to be very good on 30, also good on 60 and 15, and the other ones I would probably have to use a tuner for. So this is just gonna be a direct screen recording of the screen here. Not perfect, but it's what I have. So it is receiving a lot on 30 meters, which isn't really surprising. If you don't know about the X6100, it has a tuner, a tune here, that just uh, turns the tuner on and off from a preset uh, from the last tune you had. And um, I'm gonna leave it off for now. So if you start the SWR graph and the tuner is on, it will do it on the tuned one, which is kind of useless. So this looks perfectly flat. And um, yeah, as expected one could say, but still it's really nice to see. And this is of course with the tuner disabled. Let's go to 15 meters and see it's receiving here as well. And as expected, it's good here as well. And you can see SWR here is perfectly flat. And it looks like it's perfect here on 60 as well, at least SWR wise, which is nice to see. So now it's time for the TX tests. And I'm gonna try using FT8 first and just see how that goes. Running five watts output. I'm located here in uh, South Eastern Norway in Judith Oscar 48 Papa X-ray and what I would expect is to hear stations from Europe which is what I can do here and uh, also reach those. And that's at least what's typical for me when it comes to uh, 30 meter performance. Tuner turn off on the radio, 5 watts output and I'm gonna see who can hear me with a single uh, FT8 package. So I got the tuner turned off on the radio, running 5 watts output, and I'm sending one single windling package. So I got the tuner turned off on the radio, sending 5 watts, and I'm seeing who can hear me with a single FT8 package sent out there. And seems like I'm getting a reply immediately, at least somebody on the same frequency there. Yeah, got several back here, uh, German and Polish station. Both quite strong and uh, German hearing me minus 14 and uh, the Polish one minus 3. So let's check the map here. 
And yeah, I even got heard over in the States, minus 16 dB. And that's with one single packet. So that's not too bad. With two, I would expect now that, yeah, there's more people hearing me. So that was the first QSO logged on uh, this uh, antenna. Perfectly done. Plus 11 cents, minus 14 received. As expected with uh, 5 watts output. So let's go and see if I can find some other interesting station to run here. Like this uh, Tango Foxtrot 5 Bravo station over here. Uh, Iceland. So he heard me plus 7. And then got I'm so he heard me plus seven. I'm sending plus uh, twenty four back. Really nice up there in the northern part of Iceland, and that's roughly one thousand six hundred uh, kilometers or a thousand miles away. Yeah, that was a successful one. So let's check the map now after sending for about five minutes or so. Who could hear me? And I've been picked up in the States. I've been picked up over in Australia and then again all over Europe as uh, expected. So this is working quite well um, for a uh, simple uh, antenna. So let's just take a strong station like this India Sierra Zero station who's down here on uh, Sardinia and see if I can reach him. I'm also, I'm still transmitting without a tuner, 5 watts output, perfect SWR and um, let's see if he could hear me. And he could. So. Yeah, works fine on 15 as well. Then for the fun of it, go in and see who can hear me here on 15 of other stations. That's only one station that reported me in on 15 so far, at least. So you can see here after sending for a few minutes and now going up to 10 watts output, I'm uh, only here. I'm only heard in this little belt down here in Europe and it's not really strong so I would guess this is band conditions being not uh, optimal. So this was another fun project and this antenna is not for permanent mounting. I don't think this antenna would do well when it comes to actually being wet and out in storms and get ice on it and so on. But for this short term use and if you absolutely need it this is a great alternative. It's lightweight, you can find it almost everywhere, and it does the job. As for building my first uh, big delta loop antenna, simple, and uh, just follow the recipe, and it worked bang on as it should. Thank you very much for watching, 7.3.